Okay, so as I was saying, uh, have your TI calculator handy. Um, we're going to use it exclusively today. Like every problem we do, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to very easily solve it on your calculator. So you're going to want to have that handy. Um, the second thing, I'm really sorry for the short notice, but did people get my email about the PowerPoint slide I was going to use today? Just out of curiosity. All right, a few people did. One person did. Um, but if you go to the week 13 tab in the classroom, I posted this PowerPoint called PowerPoint for Tuesday's class, newly posted. I'm sorry it went up late today. Um, I just thought it'd be easier to have the examples typed out ahead of time. So <clears throat> if you don't have it handy, just um, just take notes on like the problems. Don't stress about like copying down the, the problem because you can always go back and fill that in later. Like it's just important to understand the process today as we go through it. Okay, so just some quick announcements and I'll take any questions. Um, so today we're gonna finish um, the topic of confidence intervals. Um, I know it's been, it's been a long time. It's been like 12 days since we've had class actually. So it feels like a really long time, uh, doesn't it? Does anybody else feel like it's been a long time? Yeah, yeah. So if you remember, and maybe, and maybe not, that's okay. But if you remember uh, about two weeks ago, we were talking about this topic called um, confidence intervals, okay? Um, so I'm gonna do a refresher of that. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you basically how to use your, um, your um, calculator to do them. All right, so then I've also posted homework number six to the classroom. So if you go to the classroom under homeworks, uh, homework number six is here. It says homework number five, but it's actually homework number six. Um, after class today, you'll be able to answer every single problem on this homework. Okay, so I encourage you to um, to download the homework and um, give it a shot, like even before class on Thursday. So the homework, uh, this is a change from the syllabus. Um, syllabus said the homework was to be due this Thursday. I'm changing it to Tuesday night. Um, so if you have any questions on the homework, you can ask me on uh, Thursday or on Tuesday. I'll help you with the problems. <clears throat> then on Thursday, we're going to start our final topic of the class, hypothesis testing. And isn't that crazy? We're at the final topic. Anyone excited for that to be done for the semester? Woo! I mean, I'm excited. I hope you guys are. Um, I'll also post your final homework next week. Um, and that final homework is going to cover hypothesis testing. Uh, that's going to be due Thursday the 17th. And then your last exam, exam number four, is going to be uh, in class uh, as they always have been on the uh, 17th. And we are done. 16 days from now, we are done. So does anybody have any questions about any of that? It is crazy, it did go fast. Never seems like it when you're in the middle of the semester, like in week seven or week six, but then when you get to week you know, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, you're like, wow, did, did this, the time just flew, you know? Yeah. Okay, so, um, before I get started then, um, does anybody have any final questions for me? No final questions? All right. I don't know if you guys can hear my little guy in the background is getting, it's gonna be his nap time in the middle of course class, so sorry. You know, I don't have a big house, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I wish I, I wish I could, uh, wish I had a bigger house. But uh, you know, we got to make do with what we can in the time of COVID. You know. All right. So I'm going to get started now. Um, and as I said, get ready to take some notes, and then um, have your TI calculator handy. Doesn't matter if it's a TI eighty three or TI eighty four. All right. So. Just as a review, 
what we were talking about this a while ago was confidence intervals. Okay. And what confidence interval do is they're used to estimate the value of a population parameter. Okay, and the population parameters we're gonna be in, um, estimating is mu and p. Okay, so mu is a mean and p is a proportion. And the whole idea behind confidence intervals is we use a range or interval of values to estimate the value of the parameter. Okay, so we no longer use a single value statistic. We use, we use a range um, interval estimate. And we assign a level of confidence. Okay, which we denote as one minus alpha times 100%. Okay. Alpha, and this is, you're going to see this a little later on in the class too. This is called our level of significance. But I, uh, I, I, I defined it as, you know, this is Matt's interpretation. Um, the probability you'll be wrong. Okay, because, you know, in statistics, you're never going to be 100% right because you're taking a sample. Um, but, you know, and then we had some common levels of um, confidence intervals. Okay, we had a 90% confidence, we had 95% confident, and then we have 99% confident. Okay, so if you're going to be 90% confident, how often are you going to be wrong? What do you think? Yep. So, yep. Thank you. So alpha here is equal to 0 0.10. If you're going to be 95% confident, how often are you going to be wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Just don't forget that extra zero. Yep. 5%. Uh, and if you're going to be 99% confident, you're going to be wrong 1% of the time like that. Okay. Now I know it's been two weeks. But does this kind of little bit ring a bell when we were talking about confidence intervals? I got one yes. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna do um, a review of what we talked about um, uh, a long, long time ago, and then I'll get into some new stuff. So the first thing we talked about is confidence intervals for a mean when sigma is known. So this is constructing a one minus alpha times 100%. I'm gonna put CI for confidence interval for a mean, which is the Greek letter mu, when sigma, okay? And remember, sigma is the population standard deviation is known. Okay, and the confidence interval just went like this. Okay, you take your point estimate and I'll explain what that is in a second. And you add and subtract something. And what you add and subtract is what's called the margin of error, okay? And I think we've talked about this, right? Like if we, we heard the term margin of error before, you know, if you see, especially if you see polls in the news, like we maybe we've seen this or heard this term margin of error before. Okay, so the formula was just this. Our point estimate is just X bar, your sample mean, 
you add and subtract something called Z of alpha divided by two times sigma over the square root of N, okay? So this is our sample mean. This right here was what we called the critical value. And this right here is the standard error. Okay, so now in this class, um, you know, being remote and everything, I always show you how to do it by hand, but then what do I say is uh, a easier way to do it using your what? Using your calculator, yep. Yep, so I'll, I'll, today we're gonna focus on your calculator so much, okay? I hope you guys don't mind, uh, you know, focusing on using your calculator to solve. I hope you don't feel like I'm shortchanging you at all. Um, I just, you know, in the real world, no one does this stuff by hand. They all use technology to solve it. So that's why we're sticking with it. Okay. I get the general impression that most people are happy with the calculator over doing it by hand. Am I correct? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we don't mind. I actually got an email from a student today who was like, I just want to say thank you so much for using the calculator. <laughs> I was like, no problem. No problem. Okay. All right. So let's, let's go to um, uh, the, our first example. Okay. We're just going to do one of this. Okay. So it goes like this. Suppose Apple Inc. wishes to estimate the mean talk time. Okay. Uh, for its iPhone before the battery must be recharged, okay? So in a random sample of 30 phones, so let's just write down what we're given, okay? You're given the sample size is 30. The sample mean was found to be 350 minutes. And it goes on to say, assume the population standard deviation sigma for talk time is 90 minutes. I think my son is excited for this problem. Okay. Let's construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval. Okay. For the mean uh, talk time of iPhones before the battery must be charged. Okay. So we're going to construct using the graphing calculator. All right, so everybody grab their trusty TI calculator that never lets you down, okay? It's always there for you when you need it. And so this, um, every problem we do in this section, including hypothesis testing, starts with the, you click the option stat, you scroll over to tests, And then does, I'm just curious, does anybody remember what option we would use for this? I know it's been a while. Yes, yes, thank you. Yep, it's option number seven. So you see this thing called Z interval. So you know to use the Z interval option when you go back here, when you use this critical value, okay? So whenever sigma is given, you're gonna use option number seven, Z interval, okay? So let me just go write that in the notes for us. So you press the stats button, then you went over to tests and then you look for the option called Z interval. So I'm going to go down on my calculator to option number seven. So hopefully you're following along and doing this with me. Okay. Cause practice makes perfect. So I'm going to go to number seven and hit enter. Now you're going to see two options here. You're going to see data. I didn't give you the data. I didn't give you the raw data. So you're going to scroll over to stats. Okay. And you're going to hit enter. And now what it's going to ask you is it's going to ask you to input all these little things here. So the first one, sigma. Well, look, I give it to you. It's 90 minutes. X bar, that's the sample mean, is 350 minutes. 
n is the sample size, that's 30. And your calculator defaults to a 95% confidence interval. Um, but what is the confidence level I asked for here? Yeah, so here's the important thing. You have to change it to as a decimal. Yep, you go 0 0.90 and you hit enter. And now once you get to calculate, hit this. All right, how many people got this output right here? I got one. Did anybody else get it if they were able to follow along? Okay. Yep, so look, that this right here at the top, this gives you the lower bound of your confidence interval and this gives you the upper bound, okay? So the construct is it's gonna go from 322.97 to 370, 377.03. Okay, so that's the constructing part. Okay, so now we have to interpret it, okay? And th there's some standard verbiage we're gonna use for when we interpret a confidence interval. Okay, so here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to estimate the mean talk time of all iPhones. So it goes like this, based on this sample, Our level of confidence was 90. We are 90% confident that the mean talk time on the iPhones is between 322.97 minutes and 377.03 minutes. Okay, so that's, I just wanna be clear. That, that's an estimate for the average, for the mean. Uh, an incorrect interpretation would be saying like, oh, 90% of iPhones have a talk time between those two numbers. That's not true. Or if I pick up my phone, there's a 90% chance that my talk time will be between those two numbers. That's not true. What we're saying is that we're 90% confident that the average of all the iPhones Okay, their talk time is somewhere between 322.97 and 377.03. Okay. Um, ring a bell, we did this, I know it's been a while, but does uh, using the calculator make it pretty easy? Okay. All right, good, 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 good. So then if you remember, Gosh, I, it was so long ago. Uh, I feel bad I keep saying that. If you remember, if you remember. So um, this isn't how this stuff is done in the real world because you never really know the population standard deviation. So I said, okay, well, if you don't know sigma, you have to estimate it with S. And two weeks ago, I introduced a new statistical distribution. Does anybody remember what that distribution was called? Yes, the T distribution. Yep. I don't know if you remember, I gave you a bit of history and I said it was discovered by a brewmaster at Guinness Brew Company. I don't know if that rings a bell too. Yep. Okay. So this is how the confidence intervals are done in the real world, okay? So when sigma is unknown, we estimate it with S, the sample standard deviation. Okay. And basically what's going on here is we can no longer use the Z of alpha divided by two critical value. All right, we must use this T of alpha divided by two critical value. And I showed you once how to read the, um, the T table and it was really easy, um, but you know, we're just gonna stick with our calculators here. So our new formula is this. It's 
it's x bar add and subtract t of alpha divided by two times s over the square root of n. Okay, so the only thing is different. We have a new critical value and we use s instead of sigma. Okay. So I've, you know, for as long as I've been doing this, the most common issue students have is um, they don't know when to use what formula. Like the formulas in your calculator, I don't think are too tough. It's like, how do I know which formula to use, Matt? Um, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. So let me just give you some tips, okay? So like, You'll use the Z interval stuff when the problem literally says, assume the population standard deviation, or you see this Greek letter, like you will use the, the Z interval when you see this type of stuff. Okay. So now let me show you, I got a couple of examples of this now. Okay. Is everybody okay if I move on? Anybody need me to slow down to copy this? Okay, for me to move on? That's what you guys mean there, yeah. Okay. So I think I've got one, two, uh, three examples. So that you'll, by the end of these three examples, this will be a piece of cake for you. All right, suppose an economist wishes to estimate the mean commute time of workers in Westchester County. So they're just on average, how long it takes people to get to work. So the economist obtains a random sample of 31 commuters. So look, let's see what you're given. All right, in Westchester County and finds the sample mean to be 31.2 minutes. And look, Sample standard deviation. Okay, is this the sigma or S? The sample standard deviation. Yep, so look, it's S. And the sample standard deviation from those 31 commuters to be 12.1 minutes. Okay, so now it says again, construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the mean commute time in Westchester County. Okay, and then just so we're clear, this is why we have to do um, these confidence intervals. So I, I sampled 31 commuters and I got the sample commute time to be 31.2 minutes. Do you think the average commute time of, of Westchester County workers is exactly 31.2 minutes? Like is the commute, yeah. It's like, no, it's, it's not, definitely not. So like, what could it possibly, the real value possibly be? Well, there's no way we can know, right? So that's why we need to estimate it with a confidence interval. All right, so here, okay. Again, we're gonna use our TI calculator. And these are the options you're gonna press, okay? You're always gonna press stat. You're gonna scroll over to tests. And look, we use number seven, all right, whenever we had a Z critical value. But if you look back in the slides here, I have a T critical value. Can anybody guess what option we'll use here? Yeah, we want this T interval now, okay, T interval. So you're gonna use stat. Tests, and it was T interval. All right, so let's go back to our trusty calculator. So let's go down to the T interval. I'm just curious, on the, on the TI-83, is it option number eight as well? For people who have the TI-83? Pretty sure it is, yeah, okay. Yes, it's option number eight. All right, thank you. So when you hit enter, you should see this. Okay. And what it's going to have here, how many on the TI-83, you probably don't see this, but on the TI-84, if you had previous numbers from like any other, even from the Z interval, it keeps them there. 
But so let's, we have the options of data or stats. So we want stats because we're giving you the summary statistics. So you're going to scroll down. And if you have numbers there, just write over them now. So X bar was 31.2. S sub X, the sample, that S sub X stands for the sample standard deviation right here, which is 12.1. And N is 31 here. So my confidence interval, I asked for a 90. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as 0 0.9. And then I'm just gonna go to calculate. And how many people see this on their calculator? And that's the answer right there. Okay. So it's 27.511 to Okay, so boom, we've constructed it. Our calculator did it for us super quickly. All right, piece of cake. Now let's interpret it. So this, just stick with the this, this standard verbiage. Based on this sample, we are 90% confident The mean commute time of workers, because we're talking about workers in Westchester County, is between twenty seven point five one one minutes and 34.899 minutes. All right, what do you think? You think you could knock a, a problem like this out on the last exam out of the ballpark? A little bit of a baseball reference there. Okay. All right, I get good vibes. I think you can handle it. All right, let me switch it up and ask maybe a harder problem if, if that's okay. And it's only harder because it involves a little bit more calculator work, okay? Um, everybody okay if I go on? Bum, bum, bum. Okay. We're actually, if you remember, I said this uh, T distribution um, was discovered by somebody named Gassat, okay? And this is the actual, um, actual paper uh, that he wrote about this T distribution. And we're gonna construct a confidence interval that this gentleman actually did um, over 100 years ago. So in 1908, W.S. Gassat published the article, The Probable Error of a Mean, okay? And in this pioneering paper written under the pseudonym student, Gassat introduced what later became known as that student's t-distribution. Okay, so Gassat used the following data set, okay, which gives the additional sleep in hours obtained by a sample of 10 patients. Oops, let me go back. Using this drug, okay. I'm just going to call it the sleep drug, okay. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Okay, if you can pronounce it, you're a better, better person than I am. All right. So this is the actual data he has. And what this data is, is the additional hours of sleep people got using the sleep drug. Okay, so somebody got an extra 1.9 hours, an extra 0.8 hours, so on and so on. This looks like one person actually lost a little bit of sleep, 
oh my gosh, someone took the drug and got 5.5 extra hours and so on, okay? <clears throat> my son is uh, not sleeping again at night, so um, you know maybe I'll have to see if I can give him some of this. That was a joke, don't call Child Protective Services, that was a joke, okay? I'm only like 90, 99% kidding though. Okay. So let's determine a 95% confidence interval for the additional sleep that would be obtained on average of all people using this sleep drug. Okay. So do you notice that like this problem is a little bit different from the other one we just did? Like the other one, I told you what the mean and standard deviation was. Look, I said, ah, oh, the mean was 31.2 and the standard deviation was 12.1. And this problem, I just give you the data, okay? And, and actually that's fine, okay? It, it just involves a little bit of an extra step for us, all right? So what we're actually gonna do is take our calculator. And what we have to do is we have to plug the data into our calculator, okay? So everybody hit the stat button on your calculator. And it's been a while since we've actually done this, but, um, under option number one, edit, and then under number one, edit here, you want to edit the list. So under number one, hit enter. Okay. This is important. Okay. Please, this is important. Does anybody not see L1 right here? Okay. So you should see L1 there. That's the hope. All right. If you don't see L1, you're going to have to reset your calculator. So now what I want to do is I want to take this data and plug it all in. So let's all just go through it. 1.9, 0 0.8, 0 1.1, 1 .1, 0.1, minus 0 0.1, ugh. an extra 4.4 hours, what I wouldn't give for that. 5.5, 1.6, 4 4.6, I'd even settle for 3.4. Okay, so you should have the, the data plugged into your calculator, just like that, okay? So now the next question says, um, as I said, determine a 95% confidence interval for the additional sleep that would be obtained on average for all people who use this. So again, we're gonna wanna have our calculator do this. So hit the stat button after you have the data plugged in. You're gonna go over to tests And which option do you think we're gonna use here? It's option number seven or option number eight. And why do you think I, you, you, that is correct, uh, Dulesky, but why do you think option number eight? It's the absolute right answer. Yep, that's it. Look, and you only use option number seven when you're told the population standard deviation. Nowhere in this problem do I give it to you. Okay, so you just have the raw data. So you're going to scroll down to number eight dun, 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 or press eight on your calculator. So your calculator might still be saved on stats, but what we actually want to do is scroll over to data. Okay, so scroll over to data and hit enter. And then you should see the following thing. It says list. And you should make sure that you see L1 there because that's the list that we put the data in. You're now you're gonna scroll down to the confidence level. And look, I gave you, I asked for a 95% confidence level. So you have to change that to 0 0.95. And then go to calculate. And you should see this. How many people got this, just out of curiosity? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's it, that's confidence interval, right there. Okay, so I'll go to three decimal places. It's 0 0.898 and 3.762. Totally forgot it already. <laughs> Eight, nine, eight to 3.762.
Okay, that's this is our 95% confidence interval for the additional sleep on average. Okay. So what we're saying is, look, anybody who takes this drug, we're 95% confident that they'll get between 0 0.8 nine, eight additional hours or all the way up to, it could be, the mean could be as high as 3.762 additional hours of sleep. Okay. So let me ask you this, was the drug this, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Um, was this the sleep drug uh, effective in increasing sleep? So the people who take this drug, would you say it's pretty good at increasing sleep? Yep. So explain your answer though. Like, how do you know and why? See, my son is like, explain, explain. Yeah. All right. So let me, let me help you out here. So do you notice how the confidence interval doesn't go below zero? Like if, if, if the confidence interval had gone to gone into the negative numbers, we couldn't say that the additional sleep was any different from zero. But since the confidence interval is strictly positive, yes, the drug was effective because the additional sleep on average is between 0 0.898 hours and 3.762 hours. Okay, so that means when you take the drug on average, you get more sleep. Okay. So not too bad, right? So if I give you, instead of the summary statistics and I just give you a raw data set, can you very easily find the confidence interval? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think we should give my son some of this? So he'll take his afternoon nap. So this was, I'm sure this drug is outlawed by the way. I'm sure it has some like, crazy side effects, but um, let's, let's do one last problem and then we'll take our break. Sound good? Okay. Bum, bum, bum. So this is real data and I'm, I, I was actually a little skeptical of this, but um, so the general social survey, and I've talked about that in class, is a survey of opinions um, and lifestyles of U.S. adults and is conducted by the National Opinion Research Center, which is called NORC at the University of Chicago, which is a real place and they do really good survey research. Uh, so a sample of 81 people, okay, aged 18 to 22, reported the number of hours they spent on the internet on average in an average week. So how many hours they spend on the internet in an average week? All right, so let's see what we're given just first off. We're given the sample size, it's equal to one, 81. So on average, they were saying that people spent 8.2 hours per week on the internet. Okay, 18 to 22 year olds, okay. What do you think of that number? High or low? I think it's way low. I, so it's just, I just pulled this problem and I'd be really interested to see like what they specified as time spent on the internet. Like uh, for example, I hate to admit this. Um, I just, I like, before I went to bed, I watched like two hours of Netflix last night. Okay. <laughs> Um, 
Oh, actually it was Disney plus. I'm sorry, not Netflix. It was Disney plus. And so like, does that count? You know, you have to be, um, you have to be um, careful. So you have to dig into it a little bit more. Hey, Disney plus has some good stuff on there. No need to laugh at me. You know, got to, got to watch the Mandalorian, things like that, you know? Uh, and then it goes on to say, it does have some good stuff. Probably going to watch more tonight. And it goes on to say the sample standard deviation is 9.84 hours. Okay. What's really interesting here, if you look at these numbers, it means the data sets have skewed very right. Um, but anyways, let's construct a 95% confidence interval, okay, for the mean number of hours per week spent on the internet by people aged 18 to 22 in the United States. Okay, does this look just like the first problem we did? Yeah, let's use the TI calculator. Okay, so again, you're going to use the option stat, tests, and because you're given the sample standard deviation, all right, you're going to use T interval. So stat, I'm going to scroll over to tests. Bum, 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 bum. T interval. And then you got to scroll over. Now I'm giving you the stats. I'm not giving you the data. So let's scroll over to stats. So now you just have to plug this stuff in, right? So X bar was 8.20. S sub X is 9.84. The sample size is 81. And I asked for a 95% confidence interval. So that's good. How many people see this on their screen? Okay, good. All right, so it's just going to go from, I'll just go to two decimal places here. Uh, yeah, I'll go to three. Let's get, let's get crazy. 6.024 to 10.376. So now we're ready to interpret it. Look, based on this sample, we are 95, we are 95 percent confident that the mean time per week that people aged 18 to 22 year olds spend on the internet is between 6.024 hours and 10.376 hours. And what's really interesting, actually, when you go do, if you were to pull like the actual general social survey, not only would they say that the average was 8.2 hours, but they would construct this confidence interval for you. It's like part of the part of the press release that they put out for it. So it's, it's this stuff is actually done in the real world. So regardless, um, pretty good with this stuff. Think we'll be okay handling it on the exam. You'll get to use your calculator, so it won't be too bad. Okay. All right, so what do you guys think? Break time okay for 10 minutes? All right, let's, let's come back.
let's say 155, okay? So we'll take a nine minute break here. All right, everybody, I'll see you in 10 minutes.
All right, what do you say we uh, finish up for the afternoon? Sound like a plan? I hope so. <laughs> Just checking my mic, everyone can still hear me, right? Yeah, I can go back to the last slide, of course. And I'll post these slides too right after class. And just you know, it'll take a uh, take a second for the um, you know for me to um, post the the lecture to YouTube, but it'll be up there in a bit. Okay, let's look at. Um, Is it okay for me to go on now? Let's do uh, the final topic for confidence intervals. So now what we want to do is we want to talk about confidence intervals for proportions. Oh, just uh, this is like a weird side note before I get into this. Do you guys hear my chair every time I move like like that. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> Sorry. You know, so it's funny. My wife gave me my uh, Christmas gift early today. She bought me a new chair. So next class, you won't have to hear, hear that anymore. Okay. It's a little late, but just wanted to let you know. I'm going to miss this chair. I've had this chair for like a really long time, but time to move on. All right, anyways, confidence intervals for proportions. So now we want to apply the concepts. Of confidence intervals. For proportions. Okay, so we want to estimate some population proportion. Okay, so I'm just going to build the confidence interval. Okay, so it's the confidence interval is a range of values. Okay, which means it's a lower bound and an upper bound. And how you construct these confidence intervals are exactly the same way. Okay, it's a point estimate. plus or minus the margin of error. Okay, like nothing changes there. Okay, that's still how you construct it. All right, so what we saw was the point estimate is a single value estimate. So for uh, a point estimate for the mean was X bar. Here, the point estimate for a population proportion is just P hat. Do you guys remember talking about P hat a while ago? Yeah, okay, so just like just recall real quick. P hat is equal to x over n. Okay, where x is the number of individuals who have a certain characteristic. Divided by n is just the sample size. So it's p hat, add and subtract the critical values. So for these critical values, we go back to z of alpha divided by two, okay? So we don't use the t stuff, okay? So these are gonna be the critical values we're gonna use. So we're gonna do one of these problems by hand. So you can just see here, like I gave you this nice neat uh, cheat sheet, okay? So like, the critical value for a 95% confidence interval, you can see highlighted there is 1.960. Okay. So, you know, you'll see how to use this when we get to our first example. Times the standard error. Now the standard error is a little bit complicated here. It's the square root 
of p hat times one minus p hat over n. You know, when we were talking about the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, the standard error was p times one minus p over n. Just we use p hat here because we don't know what, what p is, okay? So this is just our formula. Okay, so it's p hat, add and subtract, critical value times standard error. So point estimate, add and subtract the critical value times the standard error. All right, and that's it. Okay, so I've got some uh, good news, good news, good news stuff. Um, we're going to do three examples. Okay, so that's the first good news. So by the end of the three examples, you'll um, you'll have a good understanding of how to do this. Uh, we'll do one example by hand. That's still good news. I know most people are like, eh. Um, but then after I do that uh, one by hand, I'll show you how to use your calculator. Okay, so I still think doing one by hand is still important just so you can see the process. All right, does anybody still need to copy before I move on? Okay. So here's the first example. In a survey of 800 parents, okay? Uh, so this is about um, uh, the children of parents anyways, but uh, 632 of them, of those 800 parents said that music had a positive, a positive effect on academic performance. So of like their, their children, like if they were playing like music in the background, it had a, um, uh, a positive impact on performance or, or that just in general people who, um, you know, took music class that had uh, music education, excuse me, not in the background, had, took music, like a music education class that has a positive impact on academic performance. <clears throat> so let's just construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval, okay, for the proportion of parents who believe that music education, all right, has a positive effect on academic performance. I'm just curious, do people in the, in the chat here think that, uh, music education has a positive impact on uh, academic performance? Yeah, I, I do, yeah. I used to play the clarinet in, in, in school. So, um, you know, no, I, I always enjoyed it. All right, so let's just see what we're given, okay? We're given that the sample size is 800, and that 632 of those people said, yeah, 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 for sure it has a positive impact. So that means P hat is 632 over 800. So let's grab our trusty calculator real quick. And let's just figure out what P hat is. So 632 divided by 800 and it's 0 0.79, okay? So 79% of parents, uh, in this sample said, yeah, yeah, absolutely has a positive impact. Okay, so that's just our sample uh, proportion. So let me ask this, do you think exactly 79% of all parents think that music education has a positive impact, that it's exactly 79%? No, it's, I mean, it's probably close to 79%, but it's not 79%. Okay, so what could the possible values, what could the possible value really be? That's why we need these confidence intervals. Okay, so we're gonna construct this by hand. Okay, so you're gonna use this formula. It's P hat, add and subtract, Z of alpha divided by two times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over n. Okay. P hat is this 0 0.79. Then we're going to add and subtract 
the first thing we need is this critical value, the z of alpha divided by two. Well, here's all you have to do if you're gonna do this stuff by hand. I want a 95% confidence interval. So I'm gonna go back. 95% confidence interval, the critical value is 1.960, 1.960 right there. times the square root of p hat, which is 0 0.79, times one minus p hat, one minus 0 0.79 divided by n, which is 800. So it's the square root of all of this. All right, let's grab, let's grab the trusty calculator, okay? So when you do this stuff by hand, what you have to do is you have to do this margin of error first, okay? So let's do the square root first. So it's second function square root 0 0.79 times, and then start a set of parentheses, one minus 0 0.79, close that parentheses, divide by 800. Now, if you have a TI-83, you have to close the next set of parentheses, okay? How many people got that if they just were following along with me? Okay, yep. Now what you still need to do is you need to now multiply this by 1.960. And you should get this, 0 0.028. Okay, how many people got that? Okay, great, great, great. So that's that's right there, margin of error. So it's 0 0.79, add and subtract 0 0.028. Okay, so our lower bound then for the interval is the subtraction part. So it's 0 0.79 minus 0. 028. So you get 0 0.762. And the upper bound is the addition part. which you get as zero point, I believe, uh, gosh, why am I so bad at math? 818, is that correct? The one thing you don't wanna hear your math teacher say is, oh, I'm so bad at math. <laughs> so look, this is what our confidence interval is. So look, let's interpret this then, okay? All we've done is construct it. Boom, got it. Based on this sample, we are 95% confident that the proportion of parents who believe music education has a positive impact on academic proportion, whatever, on academic performance, excuse me. It's somewhere between 0 0.762, and it could be as high as 0 0.818. So what do you think? Even even doing it by hand is just a little bit of uh, a little bit of calculator work, but is it still not too bad? Yeah, it's, it's not too bad, okay. So just as a follow-up question here looking from the confidence interval. A music teacher claims that 80% of parents believe that music education has a positive impact or positive effect, excuse me, on academic performance. 
So the music teacher says, hey, it's, it's 80%, okay? So our sample proportion was only 79, okay? But look at our confidence interval. Does the confidence interval support or contradict the claim of this music teacher? What do you think? You're both right. Why? Why does it support uh, his or her claim? Because it's between 0 0.762 and 0 0.81. Yeah, and 80% and or 0 0.8 is, is between those two numbers. So it, it literally could be 80%. It could, because it's anywhere between 0 0.762 and 0 0.818. Yeah. So yes, it supports his, his or her claim. So it supports the claim as 0 0.80 is between the bounds of our interval. We got it. Not too bad. You want me to make it even easier for you though? Everyone's like, yes. I don't know if this class is getting assessed, but I would imagine that my uh, student reviews would be like, Matt, you just got to lead with the calculator. Okay. Wonder if that's what my reviews would be. So grab your trusty calculator. Okay. So I'm going to work this problem. You didn't get it for this class. Oh, then I guess I'm not getting reviewed for this class. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. When you get tenured, you don't get reviewed as much as you used to. So I don't, I don't know. I, I you know, now that I have tenure, I only, yeah, maybe I only get one class a year or something. I'm not sure. Regardless, I hope you're enjoying the class. So I'm going to hit the stat button. And I'm going to go over to tests. And this is a little bit different. Um, okay, you have to scroll down until you see this thing under letter A that says one dash prop Z int. Okay, what this stands is for one proportion Z because we're using a Z critical value interval. Okay, does everybody see that with their calculator? One dash prop Z int. You guys see that? Okay, let's just hit enter under one dash prop Z int. And you should see this. Okay, well, X remembers how many people said um, they think it has a positive impact. So that's 632. N is 800. I asked for a 95% confidence interval, so it's already there. Then let me scroll down to calculate. Look at their interval. When we round it to three decimal places, uh, does it give the same interval we just did by hand? Yeah. Okay, so 0 0.762 when we round it right there. 0 0.818, 0 0.818. Yeah, uh, Emmanuel, yep, so you're gonna go stat. You're gonna go over to tests. And you have to scroll down a bit and you want one dash prop Z int right here. And then X is the number of people who said that it did have a positive impact, which is 632. N was the sample size, the 800 parents. And you're gonna to go to calculate. Did that help? Did you see it now? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Even easier now with the calculator? Like, is this even, <laughs> it actually can't get much easier than that, right? Would you guys agree? Yep. Okay. All right, let's, let's do just two more quick examples then and we'll rely heavily on our calculator for this. Uh, 
in a recent survey of 600 WCC students, sorry, you guys are hearing me yawn. I made the mistake of having a big lunch right before class. So yeah, I can go back for a minute. Yeah. It's foolish of me. I should eat like hours before class. It's just, uh, day gets away from me. Let me know when I can go out and I'll stay here as long as you need. Okay, great. Bum, 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 bum. So in a recent survey of 600 WCC students, it was found that 350 use social media every day, All right? So let's construct a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of WCC students that use social media every day. Okay. So look, I just like to write down what you're given. All right. What's our sample size here? How many students did we talk to? Uh, to answer the question in your form, yes, you can use a calculator for all your work. I would prefer you to use the calculator for all your work. How many students um, use social media every day? Let me just show you like what I expect to see on your homework, um, like when you submit it, okay, for using your calculator. All right, just, I just like wanna make sure that, you know, you're plugging in the right stuff and this is what I want to see. All right, so next it says construct a 99% confidence interval. Okay, so I, I just like to figure out what p hat is, first of all, just on my own, just for my own reference. So it's 350. You know, I, I, I've never used TikTok, so I don't know what that is, actually. I hear people talk about it all the time, but I just don't. I missed, I missed a lot of things. I'm a little bit older. Like, I, I miss Snapchat or whatever. Is that what it's called? I miss Snapchat. Um, I missed TikTok. I missed Instagram. I don't even have an Instagram account. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So P hat is 0 0.583. I, I, I do own Facebook stock. Yes, it's, it's funny. <laughs> no, I don't, don't uh, use this stuff. I do invest in it as well. Okay. So I sold my Tesla stock after the split. Uh, anyway, so we got, that's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's, let's stop talking about stocks. We'll go back to this. So um, when you go to use your calculator, this is what I want to see. Okay. This is what I want you to write. Okay. Just that you use the options. Stat tests. And then does anybody remember what this one was called when you want to find a confidence interval for a proportion? Yep. You got to just do it's one prop Z int. Yep. This is what I want to see. Okay. One prop Z int. And then just in parentheses, I would like you to put that you put in X is equal to 350 and N is equal to 600. Okay, that's just, so the reason I want to do that is in case, you know, if you made an error, I just want to see where the error was. Like, did you put the wrong values in? Did you click the wrong options? Like, you just need to show me this on the homework. So stat, let's go over to tests. Let's go to one prop Z in right here. And then just plug in those values, right? So 350, 600. And then just be, just be careful here, okay? I did a 99% confidence interval. So notice here it's, it's default to 95. You just gotta make sure to change it correctly. And you should see something that looks like this. Okay, how many people got this?
Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. So let's go to three decimal places. The confidence interval is 0 0.531 to 0 0.635. And that's it. So I only asked you to construct it in this one. So now that you've seen me do this with the calculator, could you handle one of these very easily on, on the last exam? Okay. Good, good. Um, you know, for like the last exam, some things I'll do is like, I'll have like, if I give you a multiple choice question with this, um, you know, like I'll, I'll have, I'll have constructed like a 90 and 95 and 99. So just like, make sure you know which one I'm asking for in the problem. Okay. So just be very mindful of that. All right. What do you say? We just do one last one here. All right. So a certain WCC professor believes that less than 50% of college students, okay, watch the online lectures their professors post. <gasps> what do you think? That's not true. I don't know. I don't know. I teach a lot of internet classes. I'm not sure. Is it me? I don't know. I, I'm just picking a certain professor. I don't know who it is. Okay to test his belief while well, as a man too. So I don't know. He samples 500 college students and finds that 240 watch the online lectures posted by their professors, okay? So does this provide evidence to support the professor's belief? And it says using 95% confidence interval to test my belief, uh, the professor's belief, not my belief, the professor's. That was a, that was a slip there. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I'm just kidding around. It's funny. All right. All right. So let's just write down what he's given here. Okay. All right. How many uh, students did this professor sample? Okay. 500. How many said they, uh, they don't, that they watch the online lectures? Okay. So if you were to just do the p hat of this, you would take 240 divided by 500. I think you'd get 48, okay? So is that less than 50% right there? Yeah, so like, but this is where you have to be careful with statistics, okay? And especially when you see data and, and what you can conclude from things. So remember the professor said, I believe less than 50%, so less than half my students watched the online lectures, okay? So this certain professor, whoever it is, um, first name might be Matt, I don't know, um, samples 500 students and 48% of those 500 students say they watch the online lectures. So, you know, that, that is less than 50%, but like, does it provide uh, enough evidence to say for sure all college students watch, or all, that less than 50% of all college students um, watch their online lectures? So here's, here's the whole crux of it. Um, if I were to sample another 500 students, do you think I would get exactly 4.48 again? No, I, maybe, I mean, I don't know what I would get. And do you think that the real proportion is exactly 48% of students watch their online lectures? No, no, it's not exactly 48%. Okay, so what could the real value be from this sample? Okay, so now let's construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of college students who do watch the online lectures. Uh, 
Okay, so again, you're gonna use the, the one dash prop Z int, okay? So you're gonna use the option stats, tests, one dash prop Z int, okay? And I'm gonna plug in X is equal to 240 and N is equal to 500. So a trusty calculator, you're going to go stat, you're going to go over to tests, you're going to go down to one dash prop Z int. So X is 240, N is 500, and just make sure you change the confidence level to the one I want. Okay, so it's 0 0.95. How many people got this value right here? Okay, great, a lot of people did. So the confidence interval could be anywhere, or the, the confidence interval says the proportion could be anywhere from 0 0.436 to 0 0.524. Okay, so now here's the question. Does the confidence interval support his claim? What do you think? I got a yes, okay. Anybody else? Yes, it definitely supports this claim, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, okay. So here's the thing, okay? So actually the, the confidence interval, I'm gonna, gonna say something, it actually does not support his claim. Okay, let me, let, me, let me kind of explain why, okay? What did the professor believe? Less than 50 um, watch the lectures. Okay, so the professor says, look, less than 50% watch my lectures. Grumble, 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 okay? So you construct this confidence interval, and, and this is what it's saying. It's saying, well, look, I don't know what the real proportion is, Mr. Certain Professor at WCC, okay? But the real proportion could be anywhere, okay? Looking at this, I'll change it to, per, to percentages so you can see. The real proportion could be anywhere between 43.6% or it could be as high as 52.4%. Okay, it could be any number in between here. Okay, so could it be a number that's greater than 50%? Is like 51% a possible value? Yeah, it could. Yeah, 52 is a possible value, 50.05% is a possible value. So, like, even though we got a proportion that was 48%, it doesn't, doesn't provide enough evidence to say, you know what, for sure it's less than 50%. Because the real value, just by looking at our confidence interval, um, the real value could be above 0 0.50. So no, the interval does not support his claim. because the interval goes above 0 0.50. Let me just as a sidebar here, if the interval had been something like this, 0 0.40 to 0 0.49, okay? Do you notice how this confidence interval is strictly below 50%? Do you guys see that over here? Like if, if the confidence interval had been this, it would support his claim, okay? But since it does, it's not that, okay, I'm glad it makes sense. I'm, I, um, sometimes seeing it when, it when it would work out has it explains it better. 
But since the value, like it could be above 50% in here, it does not support his claim. So I'd, I'd like to do this stuff just like, when you see a poll like in the news or something and it says, oh, 51% of people support something, so a majority must support it. That's not really like what's going on. Like, that's not a correct use of statistics, right? Like, because the real value could be lower than 0.51. Like, this is just a sam one sample, you know? So what do you think? At least, con let me ask this, is at least constructing the confidence intervals pretty straightforward? Okay, if I ask like a follow up question like this, like does it support now that you've seen me do a couple kind of make sense. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I got to does everyone mind if I do a quick one another one real quick then, and then we'll call it quits for the day. I'll just do another one real quick Liliana you got to forgive me I'm gonna have to make it up off the top of my head so hopefully it works out okay. Is everybody okay if I go on to the next slide? Um, suppose a politician wants to see if a majority of people in his or her district uh, let's say supports um, a COVID um, stimulus package. Okay. So you have this politician, right? So like, um, let's just, let's just pick a Congresswoman. Okay, so I'm in New Jersey. My congresswoman is named somebody named Mikey Sherrill. She's really good. Um, and so she's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to vote for this, this COVID stimulus package. I want to make sure that a majority of people in, in central New Jersey, where I'm the congresswoman, supports the package before I um, vote on it. Okay, so what she might do is she might take a poll of, of her constituents. So in a poll, of 1,000 um, New Jersey residents. It was found that 560 support a COVID stimulus package. Like another round of stimulus checks or to expand um, like the unemployment benefits. Okay. That's what I mean by the COVID stimulus package. Okay. So does this poll suggest a majority of New Jersey residents support the COVID stimulus package? At the 95% confidence level. Okay. <clears throat> so here's, here's the problem. What I'm asking you to see if a majority Okay, so what 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 represents a majority in terms of a percentage? What do you need to have to have a majority? What do you just have to be greater than to be a majority? More than half. Yep, you just need to have more than 50%. Okay, it could literally be 0 0.50001. Okay, as long as it's above 0 0.50, it's a majority, okay? So this Congresswoman, um, she polled 1,000 people. How many of them said they would support the stimulus package? Mm-hmm. 
So P hat is 560 over 1,000, which would be 0 0.56. So it does just our P hat is above 50%, okay? But you have to be careful. Like we just saw in this previous example, our P hat was below 50% but it didn't provide enough evidence that it was, act, it was actually less than 50%. So let's take this P hat and see if it um, does support the, you know, that more than half. So you're gonna use the calculator. All right, you're gonna use the option stat, tests, one dash prop, zint, and you're plugging in 560 and 1,000. Boom, 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 boom. So stat, you go over to tests. Boom, 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 boom. You go down to one dash prop Z int right here. 560, 1,000, that's awesome. Confidence level, 0 0.95. Let's calculate. How many people got this? Okay, good, awesome, awesome. So I'm just gonna go to two decimal places here just, just to make it a little easy. So it's gonna be 0 0.53 to 0 0.59. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Look, I'm 95% I'm confident that somewhere between 53% and 59% of people support the package. So does this confidence interval um, support the, the suggestion that a majority of people in, in New Jersey and her district want or support a stimulus package? What do you think? Liliana, why, why do you think yes? It's the right answer. It's the, you have, it does support it. Uh, because it's over 50%? Yeah, yeah, because the confidence interval is saying, look, it's, it's, it's strictly over 50%. So absolutely. Confidence interval supports the claim. that a majority supports a, a COVID stimulus package. Okay, and this is because our interval is strictly above 50%. Okay. Did that help seeing the second example real quick? I hope so. All right. We made it. We did it. We'll call class here. Uh, heavy use of our calculator. So next class, um, so I'll post this. Yes, everyone have a great day too. So what I'll do is next class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our final topic hypothesis testing. Um, come ready to take a lot of notes next class. So the first, so class next time is gonna be very heavy. Um, like introducing the topic, talking about the language of hypothesis testing. And so bear with me. And I, I think this is how class goes a lot of times, you know, like, you know, when I first introduce a topic, it's a little weird until you see an example or two. Okay. It's going to be the exact same way with this. Okay. So just uh, come to class ready to take notes and pay attention. And, um,
yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday. All right, give your homework a shot that's posted, okay? Come, you know, you're ready to do the entirety of the homework. So if you come with questions on Tuesday, I'll answer them. All right, goodbye, everybody. You're welcome.